six simply. And Alan says, hey, that's great. Well, that's a good keyword. All I gotta do is be at $5.47 or $6, and I'm going to get the keyword. And then I'm gonna get put on the top. That's what we call, that's SEM, Search Engine Marketing, that's paid search. But after a while, your 546 runs out, and you say, I ain't doing that anymore. So what have you done? You don't have anything, you don't have any longevity there. But the other thing I just mentioned a while ago is Google is in the keyword business. So it's their job to get you to bid $6 on that keyword because it's popular. Okay? Yeah. That may be true, but is it effective in your campaign? That's the reason why if you've got a you've got word stream and you've got keyword tracker, SEM Rush, what SEM Rush does is SEM Rush gives you what Google is giving you, plus it's giving you extra information on how the keyword is used and the dynamics of the keyword and is there competition on the keyword, what's that keyword costing, all of this stuff you can find out here in keyword. I probably don't use everything that you can use in the SEM Rush. And I learned this in Toronto back a couple of years ago at the uh, Search Engine Marketing Exposition. And I find most of the professionals who do this day to day, they're trusted SEM Rush. So I'm going to trust it. So what's the first thing that you do is we think. And so somebody give me a term. Alan, give me a term on what do you, what do you, and, and let's think about writing a blog. And when you think about writing a blog, this is where it all starts because now you're laying down the uh, foundation, you're laying out your strategy. So now you got to think about what you want to write about. So Alan, what do you want to write about? It's included pond. Okay, okay, a secluded pond. Okay, a secluded pond. Yeah, because I'm going to ask you that. We're talking about this property today. Okay. Ed wants to talk about an outhouse. Now, you want to talk about a pond, somewhere in the back of your mind, you think a buyer's out there and they want a piece of property with a secluded pond or something like that. Well, it's, it's a property that has a pond on it, and there used to be a house built on the pond. We're going to go on so is this, property, is this a property that you have for sale? And you're going to get it to auction. So is this a property that you have for sale? Yeah. Okay, so this is a real live deal. All right. So you got a secluded pond and you got land and you got property. So let's let's go with what your initial thought was with secluded pond. Okay, so what we're going to look, we'll look for is we're going to look for a seed word. And a seed word may be the most significant piece of that phrase that you're talking about. And we're going to type it in the keyword in the, into the keyword bar right here. So secluded may not mean a whole lot, no. but pond may. So let's type in pond, and we're going to simply do a search. I'll be on here first. So we can start with a high level of word, and then it's going to help you. Yeah, you won't, you won't, uh, you won't, The C word, which your C word is pond, you type that in and you start getting the volume. And now you can start weighing down and we want to come in here and we want to look at our full report. Okay? So, this is where that you begin to think about how to come up with the rest of your keyword phrase. So when you take them and say, all right, what are the features that this property is unique about? What are the unique aspects of this property? Well, is that and the pond is one thing, mm -hmm. but as as you come down and you start looking, you start looking at your uh, your keywords, you may say, you know what, this may not be what people are searching for that is relevant to what I'm going to write about. Now, you could come in here and you could flip this around and you could say, you know what, I, I, I want to pond is. Pond is a word that's used. It's searched 18,000 times a month. Now, CPC means right here that this is cost per click. If you're going to start a Google AdWords campaign, the CPC for the Google AdWords campaign is going to cost you $2.64 a click. How Google's cost? What does it say? Well, because Google, we, we're just going to say Google is the king of all this. Okay. But we're going to say that the average of all the search engines is $2.64, and, and mainly they're going to pull this from Google. Yeah. I'm curious about something. This is maybe the dynamics behind how this happens. But cost per click. Why do different words have different amounts? Why is that one amount for each word? Because it's not as popular. Well, 
because Google says pawn is a lot more popular, so we're going to put that up on the auction, and now people are bidding two dollars and sixty-four cent get put about a fold. Well, <clears throat> more uh, when you search pond, we'll see what comes up. Uh, well, wiki comes up for a whole lot of things. Let's see. Uh, let's see what happens. What I'm trying to do is to get now. When I do that search, land with pond because we're going to talk a little bit more definitely when we start writing our when we start writing our blog, we want a long tail keyword term because we know that from looking at the keyword research that pond is on golden pond and Frito chip pond and all this other kind of stuff that doesn't it doesn't even doesn't even you know correlate to what what we want to do. So when I searched that, and what I was trying to do for you, Lisa, is to find out, is try to find where that you use the 264, because that's going to go in what they call paid search, and that's going to go at the top. There's nobody buying that here. They may have bought it yesterday or three days before. I don't even, even really see anything in the, uh, in the bottom right-hand side, on the right-hand side, or anything like that. So I'm going to go back, and I'm just going to type in land, okay? And nobody's really buying any is buying any uh, terms for land. Let's see land for sale. Um, I may have I may have something that turned off here. Up here where my cursor is, usually this is what they call paid advertising. And paid advertising, this is where this is where that that's cost per click. When you set up a Google AdWords campaign in Google and you pay $2.64 and you want to be optimized for the word pond, it goes up there if you bid three bucks. Three bucks is going to guarantee you that space up there. Okay? So that's one avenue that you're, you can get promoted. So when we're doing the marketing budgets and we come back to what we talked about earlier, how do you get 12 million impressions or how do you get 5,000 unique visitors, is that's part of the equation is you buy the keywords and you get pushed right up there but what the stats say is only 30 percent of the people believe in that 70 percent 30 percent of Google. 30 percent of the searchers 30 30 percent of the people who are searching for any word yep. believes in organic search over yep. pay they wow. do believe in organic yep. they do believe in organic so what your goal here as a marketer organic or well, i know the difference Okay. But I'm saying they believe in. They believe. They believe when when I type in pond. Yeah. If I want to know about a pond, if I didn't know the definition of the yeah. pond, or if I do know that, if if I know what a pond is, but I really want to know the definition of the pond because I don't want to look like yeah. a goofball when I'm writing something or other. Like I'm, long tail, I just Google and make sure I got that right. I'm going to type in pond, and what Wiki says because Wiki's organic, right? Yeah. Okay. This is your organic search results. Not paid. Yeah. If, if anything was paid, it would be up here at the top. Uh, okay, let's, and, and an example would be here, if you want to look at Pond, it's a rock band, if they were promoting, if they were, and I don't think that that's what they're doing here, but if they wanted to pay for their promotion, they're going to have an ad up there that basically says, hey, we're Pond, we're a rock band, and I'm advertising here, and click here to get the results. What you're saying is most people go down below that. That's right, down. because the organic results, yeah. now do you believe in, GMOs and and when they inject the beef with the growth hormones or do you believe with your little cow out there grazing on the hill and he's growing organically which one would you eat first? Mm -hmm. John, John. Oh, John eat anything. We found that out last night. When he's away from when he's away from Brenda, that <laughs> yoga will eat anything. <laughs> so he is, guys. Especially if it's cooked in the butter. That's it. <laughs> so. <laughs> but what the world would just relay it to organic vegetables. Exactly. So what you're saying is. You're going to do a search, there's going to be a bunch of strings up there. I always go down past them and go to the next ones to look organic. That's right. That's, so, so when we're down here and organically, Wikipedia says this is the definition of a pond. 70% of the people believe that. believe that. Now what Google says, or the search engines say, the 56 search engines out there, and we know Google is, a, is on the top of the heap. What, what the search engines are saying is that Wikipedia has credibility because they're doing the things right in order to 
push their information out. And now they have authority because a gazillion people believe in Wikipedia. And now in organic search results, I'm going to believe that the Wikipedia definition is right. So let's change that to us. If we were the top result, then the people, the 70 percent, if we were... That's right. So what they we're believe doing, that we were the authority. That's right. So what we're Got doing it. in here today is we're going to learn how to write a blog, okay? And by doing your keyword research, you're going to you're going to figure out. Uh, let me get. You're going to figure out on these terms right here that which term. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to let's just. Uh, so you you just confirmed what what I believe is from my own little world is that is that when you do a search, you get that first result, I almost invariably don't even look at what's in the ad section. That's right. I go down to the, that's probably the third, fourth, fifth line down. That's and then skip the rest of it. Yeah, all the stuff above it, I don't even look at it. So, now, we're, we're going to type in, we're going to, we're going to go, you start, and we could have done this with land, and you, you can see right now that pond can kind of go off in, in a bunch of different directions. Yeah. Okay, in so many different directions. So when we start looking at land now, we're going to start thinking about what, how can I use the seed word, and our seed word hypothetically here would have been land. How can I use this to match selling a piece of property in New York? Okay, so I just typed in land for sale in New York. So now it's going to give me all of the variations right here of the top search results from people searching for land in New York. Now. So is that, at this point, since there's more than one word, they consider that a search string? Or well, still search yeah, this is, this is a long-tail search term. Okay. okay. Oh, long-tail. Your short-tail search term is land. Land, I mean, land is a short-tail. Long-tail is land for sale in New York, land for sale in America, land for sale whatever. Okay, so sure. we're, going to, we're going to focus on land for sale in New York. And so now what you begin to do is you begin to analyze what people are searching for with with a better definition. So to come back to Whitney's question, if Alan writes a blog about land for sale in New York, his goal is to be above the fold when the search results come back in that in that organic area. So I don't know why you're doing it, but you're showing me the upstate New York land for sale. That's the most expensive one up there. And I didn't think upstate would be a key word to run in there. Well just think about it. okay now I think remember what was our word a while ago? Think. Think about maybe when you're writing a blog, what content are you going to write about? And as you think through the process, you put your seed word in, and you want to write about land, but you need to get a more, you, you need to broaden the scope on yep. what you're writing about. So now it's land for selling New York, even though it's got a nice pond on it, maybe those keywords really didn't work into what the message that you're trying to relate. So now is that land that you have in the upstate New York. So what you begin is you begin to analyze each one of these keyword streams, and we see that the number one New York land for sale, okay? That's number one hands down, search 320 times a month. So my uh, website name being New York land not for sale, that'll give it some juice. That's right. So it, now Google looks up, and remember we're looking for some credibility. Yeah, i got to get that. Google says, okay, Alan's got credibility because... The site is named, what, what, let's back up. Google assumes that you have some credibility because the site is named New York Land for Sale. But now, when you get into the content, if it's got. You better back it up. Well, yeah, you, you got to back it up. If, it, if it's talking about selling Nike tennis shoes, all of a sudden you don't have any credibility. Boom, you're gone. So now you're talking about New York Land for Sale. New York Land for Sale in Tioga County or this county or Albany County or that county. So now as you begin to write and you're posting and you continue to post and your images, your images are tagged the same way, all of a sudden Google says, hey, Alan's got credibility. So we're going to allow him to be searchable. Now, the more you do this, the more unique content. If you write an article here and cut and paste it and put it on another page and cut and post it and put it on another page and cut and post because, hey, I'm going to create a, 100 pages of content that says the same thing. Google says, now you got duplicate content. You get blacklisted. So there's white hat black techniques and black hat techniques. Black hat techniques, I mean, you know, listen, 90% of the people just stay away from them now. 
the, the spammers and jammers and all these people in China who's sitting there behind there running to, to get shot up there, and they may be there a day, and they may sell 10,000 pairs of tennis shoes tomorrow or the next week, but all of a sudden, they're going to be gone. You want to be here for the next 25 years, so whatever you're doing has got to be white hat techniques that's writing good, clean, unique content. So now Google says you've got authority. Once that you've got your credibility and once you've got your authority, now the search engines look up and say, okay, let's see what you're going to do for the long haul. And if you're in there for the long haul and, and you're doing these things daily or weekly or two or three times a week and every time you post a new listing or whatever, and you're going and you're doing your keyword research relevant to whatever topic that you're searching on because, number one, you want some traffic. In order to gain traffic, I mean, why put out an article that one person is searching? But then again, you know, why put out an article that 360 people are searching if you can't be ranked for it? So now we begin to analyze a little bit. So as we're looking at this and you're doing the right thing, you automatically picked up. You can be on the top of the search heap and upstate New York land for sale, you can buy that and you can do some search engine marketing, paid search, and be shot right to the top. Now that may help you because if you've got a listing and you, if, if the, if we're doing this in a competitive bid situation, we only know that we got six weeks to sell this thing right here. You're Listen, I want, I, want, I want to be on the top of the search, okay? We don't, we don't have a year to get up. So. We don't, that's right. We don't have that year. So now we're going to be on the top of the search because I think I'm going to look down here at my competition, okay? My competition is, is at a point, is at a point, uh, is at a point eight one. And all of these are less than one, so you're going to have a lot easier time ranking. There's uh, all these say 0 .66, 0 .82. This is your competition. Okay. Com uh, competitive density of advertising using the given term for their ads. One means the highest possible competition, and then you know less than one. Down here, 0 .53. New York State land for sale is at 53.53. So you've cut out half of your competition, in other words. If, if you come in here and you, you, you write New York State land for sale, if you write a blog for that, maybe you've got an edge on your content rising to the cream of the top quicker because, and it's, well, yeah, nobody else is doing it. And it's only searched 110 times a month. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Why? You said only 110 times a month? Yeah. To me, that doesn't sound like a lot. Okay, so you got a, you got a, you got a three, 400,000 piece of property for sale. That's what the price is. Okay, so that's where, that's where your price is. Alan, do you want 110 people looking at that property the next month? Uh, let me think. Oh, well, yeah, actually. <laughs> exactly. Okay. If, you're, if you're selling tennis shoes, if you're selling basketballs, yeah, squat. You know I what? You. I, need okay. to sell, I need to sell a million of them. But when we're talking about selling auctions or we're talking about selling land, you know, you know, land is not as sexy as some of the other things out there. So, you know, it, it's a. It, you but diminish. in context for what we're doing, that's a good number. Exactly. So, and this is the reason why it's a good number. Now we're not only going to use that search term. We're going to write. We're going to write an article today about New York State land for sale. And I'm going to plan, and I'm going to think, and tomorrow, I'm going to write an article about upstate New York land for sale. And I may write another article about another property. So now you've got two on there. So what's 110 plus 110 or 110 plus uh -huh. 170? So now possibly you keep on driving, now you've got hopefully 270 awesome. people. And you do this 20 or 30 times and now you get down into writing about specific counties, okay? Albany County land for sale. And as we go into blog writing this afternoon, we're gonna, we're gonna start putting this all together on why or the content that you associate with your keyword phrase. But you gotta write it about what the keyword phrase is. Right. This, is this is more of a general thing. Don, you got a question? Yeah, the most of us are using WordPress, uh, Don. Yeah, that, and that's what I teach on is WordPress. And that's what most of us have. Some of the more sophisticated, some of the more sophisticated users have Weebly. That's me. I use Weebly. Weebly, we're, Whitney, she's above, she's above the, the fold. Yes, she's above the fold. 
My Coach Livy taught me how to use Weebly, Weebly and it's great. Well, um, it's another thing, good. Myers, what program are you using here? This is SEM Rush. SEM Rush? Yeah, SEMrush.com. And it gives you all the Google tool, tools and stuff without actually getting Google's opinion? Well, what opinion? it does, it comes in here and it, it, gives you, it gives you keyword analytics to other search engines, not just Google. I mean, okay. It's, there, there's a, as you can see here, in organic search, there's a number of results. I mean, there's, they're searching 96.8 million results having to do with land for sale in New York or whatever. The average cost per click is a uh, dollar three, and your competition out there, other people that is using paid search, is they're paying around 82 percent, 82 cent per click, depending on what keyword they're doing. So I mean, you can get really crafty. I mean, listen, is it worth 50 cent a click for you to? I mean, can you spend a hundred dollars to get 50 click throughs just to be on the top of that? I mean, so I've got 160, 170 listings out there. They're all land in New York. How do I differentiate between those and have some unique content for that many? Different well, you may want to come in there and create a marketing campaign that's just land in New York and have that gen in, in, in general <clears throat> pay per click because you don't know what these folks are doing. Okay, you don't know what these folks are wanting. But you're advertising in a pay per click campaign, so when they type in New York land for sale, or let's come back to our, yeah, New York land for sale is going to cost you 90 cent a click. Okay? So basically, if you spent $500, you're going to get 410 people click through, hopefully, to back to your website, New York Land for sale. So you're driving traffic, and in instead of spending the money to put it in a newspaper, which we know it's not getting us anywhere, you're spending $500 to be on the top of that page. What else you're doing is, if you got the local land, then that's when you talk about the barbecue joint in the local area that's when you bring in we more of the log. large larger fishnet yeah interesting to bring them to your keyword instead of just right instead well, of hammering yeah well there and, and there's there's techniques when you get into blog writing that you got local search you got local search and then you got global search but when you're talking about local search i mean you may want to you may want to write an article that's totally different that that is more community minded Yes. Okay. Now you're 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 providing information. It's like Wikipedia. Now you're the Wikipedia of Syracuse. Okay. And you start writing information and say, Hey, this is a park on the Upper East Side of Lake. What's the big lake? Oneida. Okay. Lake Oneida. Oneida, but there's Lake Oneida Lake. Is okay. So Oneida Lake has a park consists of I don't know 100 acres. Okay. So you're talking about land, right? 100 acres of land. But if you've never visited Syracuse, or if you're looking and you move to Syracuse, you know, I want to give you this information. Alan wants to give you this. So you talk about the park and you talk about these other things and it's a, and it's a community announcement. So you get rewarded for that. So I need to have somebody just doing all that right Because that's a lot of detail. That's a lot of writing. We'll get, we'll get into that. I was talking about, like as you do this, we were talking about for other things, but I see a benefit here is you can establish a repeatable process for this because you've done your initial research so where you go in is you know what your key words are that have the most hits and the views, but at the same time, you can keep that for future and then customize them as you need to as you go on. You don't have to keep researching. I mean, you might want to validate them from time to time to make sure that they're still the top ones. But I would think you'd be able to reuse as you go through for other well, properties, right, or no? Well, in, in some, there, there's a thing that's what I was referring to a while ago in, in the world of unique content, there's a thing called duplicate content. If you start duplicating too much, then you get dinged for it. Yeah. So, you know, land for sale, land for sale is one thing. Right. Okay, but Oneida land for sale, Oneida land for sale, you know, if someone locally is searching for, you know, past sale results in Oneida County or Tioga County or whatever county that you're talking about, people love search results, I mean, sold results. So you create a page where it's like past land sales, mm -hmm. For, for whatever county is, and write an article for every one of the counties in there. That's where you get some juice from that county, because I have counties I want to be in, but I don't have property there. But you're saying that's a way to do that. Yeah, so now Great. you become the expert, and all you do all you do is come in and you add content to it, and, and you, you search what has been sold, and you've got a page now, you've got a running page, and you search what has been sold, and say, hey, last week, and you just keep on stacking them up there. Last week, we had 96 acres of land sold in yeah. in the northwest part of the county. Write, write you a snippet about it 
and it's going to take some time and detail because you're talking about unique content. What was unique about this property? From searching the county tax assessor's records, we can see that this was a non-conforming track or a rectangular track or whatever that consisted on 96.0. Each, each, each character that you use is unique. What I would even do, and what I've done in the past to create, because you've got to create enough words, like three to 500 words. Wait, wait a minute now, this is a shortcut. This is a shortcut. Why not put the legal description in there? Hey, this is the legal description of this property, and that's going to eat up maybe 20 or 30 or 45 words. But is it unique to that property? It's unique to that property. So now somebody can say, well, you know what? I don't really believe that that's true what Alan said, that that sold for $3,000 an acre. That seems kind of high, okay? Let me verify that. If they want to go to the and say, yeah, yes it is, and match it up, and there's the legal description, everything match, and all of a sudden, I mean, you're the kingpin land salesman. Click, Alan, when you sell my land, how'd you get that to sell for $3,000 an acre? Hmm. Well, well uh, what it is is, you know, I'm writing this in. Maybe you didn't sell that. But I, I'm a land realtor, and I've done the research on this, and yes, that's true over there. Can I talk to you about this in your land? Uh, okay, yeah. Once again, it's link bait. It's, it's how to get people yeah. to your website. And you do that for how many counties is in there? 38 counties or something? Yeah, the state? Yeah, 62. Okay, so there's 62 just like Florida. Mm -hmm. Florida's got 62 counties as well. Hey, Myers. 67. Is it 67? If somebody wanted to auction some land, how would they get a hold of us real quick? Call 844-400-AUCTION. And the website so they could check out what we have? Acre.bid, A-C-R-E.B-I-D. Thank you. Somebody was asking they've got 150 acres in Florida, I believe, cool. that they'd like to auction. Well, you know what? We're, we're right in tune. Me and John will call them as soon as they, uh, as soon as they want to. Okay. Yeah, Acre.bid. Uh, what we're talking about in here today is, is, is actually... It's on the golf course. Well, that's good. You know, we got a golf course. we got a golf course pro right down here that, that works with us. Good. Her name's Hilda Allen. If you want to check that out, she'll help us out. So, you know, all of this is all of this is designed. Is just, yeah, we're on Periscope. Yeah. We're live. <laughs> yeah, we're on Periscope. I think is that what we're. Yes. On? So there's Meerkat and Periscope, and it'll be on YouTube in a little bit. So, it all it all boom there it goes. So anyhow, as we're talking about marketing, as we're talking about marketing, you're talking about marketing to your customers. These things are all important. And, and let, let's look from a, a buyer standpoint. Now we talk about a seller standpoint. So they're, they're searching some type of property for sale in, in whatever county that you're in in New York. But if a buyer comes in there, what does a buyer want to know? The buyer wants to know what the, what the last stats are. So if you're writing content about what the last stats are, if you're writing content about what the last stats are, then they get a reasonable assurance. Okay, if I come up here and pay three thousand dollars for an acre or per acre for a piece of land, you know, maybe I'm not getting gemmed in the side. You know, maybe I'm not getting taken for a ride. So they kind of trust and they believe that. Alan's got this. It's on your website. The property is going to be sold at auction. It's on acre dot bid. Now they can go in there and they say, okay, if I make this next bid. I'm going to give, before I make the next bid, I'm going to give Alan a call because I want to make sure that what he said on his website is true. You've written information about it. Okay, so now I'm talking to you. But this person who has contacted you, they're from Long Island somewhere. They've never seen you. They've never seen the property. But what they want, they want land in upstate New York. So now you connect a real person by communication or email or whatever it is and they give you a reasonable assurance that, yeah, you can buy this piece of land, and if you spend from a range to X amount of dollars, and if you want to make your next bid, boom. That person found that by going through search. Now, is there any other way that you could have attracted that person without going through search? The answer is yes. However, we as marketers want to use every tool available to us in order to make sure that we reach as many people as possible, especially in a competitive bid situation. Now, when our seller comes back and says, well, you know, it only brought $2,925 an acre. I want it to $3,000 an acre. Why should I sell for $2,925? Why? Because we've created a market value. And here's the reasons why we create a market value. One of them is by we've done our keyword research. We put the keyword, necessary keyword, back into our marketing, and we know that there's a certain number of people who have searched for that marketing, and here's the results. All right, I'm closing down.